Hello, this is Michael Paul with the New Orleans Scottish Rite College. I'd like to do a video today that continues on the subject of lodge improvement. The problems too many lodges face are dwindling membership, lack of interest, and poor leadership. This video will tell a story of a young man, one of many, who petitioned a lodge and is on his way to becoming a master mason. Not long ago, a young man turned in his petition to a Masonic lodge. Maybe a relative of his was a mason, or maybe he had learned of Freemasonry from a popular book or movie. Regardless, he expressed his desire to join. A few weeks after turning in his petition, he received a phone call from a man who told him that he was a member of an investigation committee working on the petition. He asked the young man if he and two other members could come out to his house and meet with him. They met at the appointed time. It was a good meeting. Questions were asked and everyone learned a bit more of each other. The committee told the young man that Freemasonry is not an insurance agency. We don't join Freemasonry with the goal of receiving health benefits or promises of financial assistance. While lodges and Freemasons have a long and honorable history of assisting those in need, Freemasonry itself is not designed to be a charitable organization such as the Red Cross. Freemasonry is also not a civic association such as the JCs or Lions Club. The primary goal of Freemasonry is to take good men and through moral instruction, hopefully make them happier and better in their lives. The young man took in all that he was told. He then asked about the history of Freemasonry. He was told that we don't have a complete or clear understanding of all aspects of our beginnings. We know that we are old. As an organization, we believe we go back to around 1717 with the reported creation of the Grand Lodge of England. But many claim that we can trace ourselves much earlier to the days of the old operative Freemasons. Many also claim that we can trace our philosophy and manner of symbolic education to an even earlier time. Sadly, we just don't have definitive answers. The young petitioner accepted all that he was told and the committee left. Both sides were satisfied. The young man was quietly excited. He knew that what he wanted to join was something very old and very important. He couldn't explain why, but he felt it in his heart. He had done his homework. He had already read the popular books and conducted internet searches of Freemasonry. He knew better than to pay attention to the large amount of flash concerning Freemasonry. He ignored the wild supernatural claims and nonsensical satanic charges. But he knew that there was something very special about Freemasonry its manner of instruction by degrees, and the whole Masonic philosophy. He felt very good about joining. In a few weeks, a letter came in the mail telling him that the Lodge had voted on his petition. The ballot was clear and the date of the initiation set. But there were many questions that he had forgotten to ask. One thing, he was unsure about how he should dress for the initiation. He thought about calling, but then remembered some of the books he owned and how the Masons all wore business suits, and some even wore tuxedos. The photos were not all that old, so he thought that they should try to match their dress. He knew that this was something very special, but assumed that if they wanted him to wear a tux, they would have told him so. So, he decided to wear his suit. When he showed up at the lodge, a number of the members were wearing old blue jeans and equally faded and worn polo shirts, some even t-shirts. Others looked like they were wearing soiled work clothes and came directly to Lodge from work. He felt a bit out of place in such a casual atmosphere. One of the men laughed when he saw him and asked if he was going to church or a wedding. The young man waited downstairs and was finally called up for the initiation. He felt slightly uncomfortable as the man who came down for him was laughing and told him, Now nah, you're in for it. In for what? What did he mean by that? He was placed in a little room by a kindly elderly man who seemed sincerely interested in his well-being. This made him feel better. The degree began. After the degree was over, the young man had mixed emotions. He knew that what he had experienced was something very important. But why was there so much laughter and talking going on? Why did he hear a considerable amount of yelling out of instructions? It was clear that some who spoke did not at all know their lines. They were stumbling and fumbling over every few words, and others, from everywhere, were feeding them with what to say. 
and doing so loudly. As he was walking around, he also heard about someone's wife being sick and another's cousin who was building a new garage. What did all that have to do with his degree? But afterwards, everyone was so friendly. Maybe he expected too much. Maybe Freemasonry really is just a group of men who meet to enjoy themselves and try to do antiquated and meaningless ritual every now and then. In time, the young man's feelings about Masonry changed from those prior to his joining. These were all nice guys. Every time he went to a meeting, he was greeted with smiles and friendly handshakes and inquiries of his health and well-being. There was a mixture of blue-collar workers and professional men. All seemed truly interested in the Lodge, but they could not really answer even the most basic questions about Freemasonry. It was almost as if Freemasonry and the Lodge were two completely different things. Questions concerning the ritual or history were always passed on to one brother who they said was the answer man. They were a nice group of men, friends, but there was nothing special in the Lodge, special in the way he viewed Masonry before he joined. This was a club made up of good guys who would meet a couple of times a month to enjoy themselves. They would visit and share a few laughs during a friendly evening. That seemed to be all that he could expect from the Lodge experience. The books were clearly speaking of something else. But what? Who were the Freemasons that he had read about? Did they ever exist? Was it all made up to sell books? After a few months, the young man found that a TV show was scheduled at the same time as his lodge meeting. It was a show that he had really wanted to watch for some time. He chose the show over the lodge. Over the next few months and years, it became easier and easier to choose many events over the lodge meetings. Eventually, the young man attended lodge maybe once or twice a year. He made an effort to try to attend some of the important meetings. He did so out of a feeling of obligation, not really enjoyment. He did see some who truly seemed to enjoy each and every meeting. These were the men who kept the lodge alive. At a few meetings, some of the ones who were always there gently scolded him for not attending more of the lodge functions. They would say things like, you know, the lodge depends on its members, and if you don't support the lodge, it will fail. But what was he to do? Was he obligated to continually go to a place that provided him with no benefit at all other than a few laughs and a meal? He had tried, but after many months of only hearing a reading of the last meeting, bills that needed to be paid, who was sick, and discussion of the next planned social event, he grew disinterested. He knew that he could spend his time in more productive ways. So, was he to blame as it was suggested? He'd even read things from ranking Masons who seemed to put all responsibility for the success or failure of a body by his simply attending, regardless of what was offered. The man at the top was never to blame, and even if he was, nothing was ever done. There was no accountability for poor leadership. It was always the rank and file members who seemed to be the responsible parties. The suggestion was that there was some lacking in the young Mason, and he needed to wake up and give his total support to whatever was offered. Was there a lacking in him? Clearly Freemasonry either failed this young man in about every way possible, or there truly was some lacking in him, or a misunderstanding on his part as to the actual nature of Freemasonry. Is Freemasonry only a club made up of good men who try to do charitable work whole friendly meetings? Or is it an organization designed to educate and uplift its members through moral instruction? In several publications, the young man saw it written, Freemasonry is the world's oldest and largest fraternity. Its history and tradition date to antiquity. Its singular purpose is to make good men better. Okay, that's clear, but how do we do that? Since this quote was written in several Masonic education publications, maybe that should give us a clue. We should teach and instruct our candidates. There are countless books and articles written on Masonic education. We learn the importance of education and teaching in our very ritual. But apart from the ritual, do we actually teach Freemasonry? Or is it only words to be spoken or read and not acted upon? How many young men 
a loss to us simply because we fail to do what we say we will do. William Lowe Bryant, the 10th president of Indiana University wrote, education is one of the few things a person is willing to pay for and not get. I believe this is sometimes very true and has been for a good number of years regarding Freemasonry. I believe that the hole that was left when quality education ceased to take place in the lodges has been replaced with additional fellowship. That's not a bad thing, but it's not the lifeblood of Freemasonry. Initiation and making good men better is our main reason for existence. The passing of time is unavoidable. Every year our lodge holds elections for officers to lead them for the next year. The young men who came into the lodge but learned very little about Freemasonry are now in leadership positions. They are the leaders, but truthfully many are not qualified. To be fair, it's not really their fault. With the speed many of them go through the chairs, how can they help but be inexperienced? They are where they are because someone tapped them on the shoulder and asked them if they would accept the position. They were just trying to be helpful. Maybe the Lodge felt that it had no one else to ask and had to take whoever they could get. Maybe it was felt that to take anyone, even someone very inexperienced, was better than closing shop. Where Masonic education once took place, discussions of Lodge picnics or other Lodge events are heard at the meetings. The time that was once spent by the Worshipful Master on planning the Masonic education of the members is often now spent on trying to learn the very basics of Lodge leadership. Lodge meetings are only as long as they are felt necessary, and then the enjoyable time of the Lodge takes place, sharing a few laughs with friends. The leaders are expected to keep the members happy, not spend too much money, and get through their year with as little hassle as possible. The hole was filled, and we are just marking time, just getting through the years. But marking time and just getting by does not secure the future of Freemasonry. It's not responsible. It's not enough that we say we are Freemasonry and act like a club. We must be either what we say or admit to being something else. To all the junior officers of Freemasonry, no matter if you are brand new to Freemasonry or have been a Mason for a number of years and are only now returning to Lodge activity, no matter what level of experience or knowledge you have, stop. Take a breath. You are not alone. You don't have to have a situation where young men are leaving your lodges because of claims that you are not giving them what they expected. You don't have to worry that you will all of a sudden be in charge and not know what in the world to do or say. You have brothers who wish to help you. But just as each of you had to step up and ask to join Freemasonry, you need to step up and make your needs and desires known. And when you are a junior officer is the time when you should do this. The internet is filled with Masonic education websites, but which ones are reliable? I suggest that you seek out the recognized and respected Masonic education sources. In the U.S., quality Masonic educational societies, which you can and should join, such as the Philalethe Society, the Masonic Society, the Masonic Service Association of North America, and other worthy state and national organizations are designed to provide quality Masonic educational resources and services. Links to these organizations are in the description below. I believe deeply in the importance of finding balance in everything. Going too far, one way or the other, never seems to bring about what is truly desired. But what do we do about our present situation? We have already gone too far. Our lodges have taken on more the appearance of clubs than lodges of moral instruction. It was not done through maliciousness. It was done out of a desire to help and preserve. It did not happen all at once, but over a period of time, it was done with no ill intentions. We all know that there is a problem in our lodges. We know that they are not the same as lodges as before. We hear the stories of days long gone. Our leaders desire to do good, but some of them are uncertain as to which path is the best one. None wish for everything to fall apart on their watch. Some may feel that to do nothing is better than to do the wrong thing. 
but cancer is never cured by inaction. There is an old Rosicrucian thought that everything felt to be of value must face the test of death. What is of true value will come back alive. What is of no value will fade away. Is Freemasonry of value? I do not believe that society or any group of people are changed by outside stimulus. I believe that change always comes through individual change. When we change as individuals, and if others change in like manner, then society changes. I believe that the very first step that we can take is to recognize that we are in trouble and traveling in the wrong direction. We then need to focus on ourselves and try to make the needed changes within us. Value is a perception. We place whatever value we choose on something. Value can also change. If you don't treat something as if it is important or valuable, it's not. Anyone who knows me personally knows that I live in blue jeans, but those who only know me from Lodge believe that I live in business suits. Going to Lodge is something that is very important to me. I dress accordingly. If I did not own a suit, I would clean myself and wear the best shirt and slacks that I owned. Try this the next time you visit your lodge. Act as if it is a very special occasion, as if you were going to a very special place to do very special things. Do what you would do if you were going to such an important event. Fix your mind to always treat going to lodge as something very, very important and special. Make that one permanent change in your life. After you've done this, join or take advantage of what is offered in one of the Masonic education services or societies that I mentioned. Freemasonry will be what its members make it. The true and sole power within Freemasonry is where it has always been, with its members, with you. Thank you for watching. I hope this video has been of some value. If you like the channel, please hit the like button and subscribe to us. See you next time.